Hello, welcome back to ITC Sport. All right, a few days ago, I looked at every Premier League manager's best ever sighting. Let's take a look at the opposite and have a look at some of their worst. And boy, God, there's some horrific ones in there. Oh, by the way, lads, I said last week I wanted to hit 300k before Christmas. I'm actually getting kind of close, so if you could go along and subscribe, you would honestly be a first-rate human being. Oh, and by the way, Twitter and Instagram is there. Anyway, let's crack on with it. Una Emery, Jesse Rodriguez. This is what happens when a club has more money than sense. Remember Jesse Rodriguez, the lad who couldn't get into a relegated team at Stoke and limping around the pitch like a constipated pigeon for nine months? Well, just three years ago, Unai Emery was paying Real Madrid 25 million pounds to bring him to PSG, which is about as clever as taking a bath with a goddamn toaster. The lad made nine appearances in his first season in Paris, no doubt fast developing an addiction to croissants or anything coated in butter, because within four months, he just ended up as a fat lump with no perception and how to cross a ball. This man is winding down a five year, 23 million pound contract and being chucked out on four disappointing loan spells. Dean Smith, Laura Kalinic. If a championship club pays seven million pounds for a goalkeeper, fair enough, you're not expecting Peter Schmeichel incarnate, but still, y you're hoping for maybe someone that, I don't know, is able to catch the ball? Someone who looks as though he didn't just coat his gloves with three pints of shampoo 10 minutes before kickoff? Christ of all, Laura Kalinic was signed up in January from Gent. His debut was an error strewn 3 0 home defeat to Swansea in the FA Cup. His league debut was another 3 0 defeat, this time to Wigan, followed by a 2 all draw with Hull. It's your first week at a new job and you're trying to impress. So, why spend your first three games playing like a badger on acid? That if a keeper concedes eight goals in his first three games, that is essentially like walking into the office of your new boss two weeks into the job and just taking a dump on his coffee table. You'd be doing well not to get sacked. Instead, he was just relegated to the bench and is now a very expensive third choice keeper. Eddie Howe, Dominic Solanke. Don't get me wrong, Jordan Ibe is lucky he doesn't make this list. This fellow was once hailed as an Raheem Sterling, despite having all the end product of a blocked toilet. But no, I'm gonna go for Dominic Solanke. I was already struggling to understand how we've managed to trick both Liverpool and Chelsea into giving him a job, but for an established Premier League side like Bournemouth to chuck 19 million pounds at his head for some lanky centre forward with no pace and who's only ever scored one Premier League goal in his entire life, chucking 19 million quid at him. It's like paying six months wages for a broken fridge. What was the point? Graham Potter, Joel Osorio. Yeah, this was just a bit of a pointless one, really. You may remember Joel Asoro from such documentaries as that grim Netflix special on how to get relegated from the championship. Asoro was one of the few Sunderland players who didn't look like he was constantly on the verge of tears or desperately hung over. Before Sunderland, there'd been hype about the Swedish striker, linked with Man United, Man City, Chelsea and Juventus. Imagine that, one day you're fending off the advances from the champions of Italy, the next you're being dragged into Swansea for two million pounds. It's like going from rejecting supermodels on Tinder to then shacking up with a three-legged sheep in a cave for six months. 13 appearances, no goals, what a waste of time. Sean Dyche, Ben Gibson. What was Sean Dyche thinking? 15 million pounds for that. Ben Gibson was the Middlesbrough captain, nephew of the chairman. Born and bred in Dunthorpe, God love him. If you'd spoke to any Middlesbrough fan, they'd have had you believe who's the next Bobby Moore. He isn't. Far from it. For a club record fee bought by Burnley in August 2018, he's only ever played one Premier League game for Burnley, coinciding with a 5-1 home defeat. Great stuff. Frank Lampard, FAM Bros. Frank Lampard had more hits than misses at Derby County. But still, what was the point of this? The signing of FA Ambrose from Celtic, a defender who could barely cut it in Scotland. Honestly, I've inspired loaf of bread that would probably start in that division. So this signing made absolutely no sense. He came to Derby in February, played two games for the under 23s, despite being in his goddamn 30s. It's like some middle-aged man turning up to a teenage disco. It just made absolutely no sense. Roy Hodgson, Paul Konczewski. Absolutely horrendous signing. Roy Hodgson signed Paul Kanchewski for Liverpool in 2010, dragging him in from Fulham for 3.5 million pounds. Yes, he'd done well for the Cottagers and was once a Stevie G screamer away from scoring an FA Cup winning goal against Liverpool. But no, by the time he did it up in Anfield four years later, Kanchewski was, was brutal. Absolutely brutal. He couldn't run, he couldn't defend, he couldn't do anything other than look like a deformed Tic Tac. Yes, lad, you have been dethroned. If that wasn't bad enough, his own mother got involved. Yes, the man was 29 years of age and was still getting his mother to fight his battles. Taking to Facebook and branding the Liverpool fans, you know, the men who paid his wages and were presumably putting a nice roof over her head. Scout scum. To all you Liverpool scout scum out there, never mind the cockney <laughs> Take a real look at your team and stop living off the past. The team are <laughs> Anyone made a mistake, it's the cockney <laughs> Never should have left Fulham. <laughs> and with that, Paul Konczewski no doubt died of sheer embarrassment. Or at least his career did. Marco Silva, Ryan Gold. Remember Ryan Gold, that teenager dubbed the Scottish Messi after he swapped Dundee for Sporting Lisbon in July 2014? I mean, you can't blame them. He was signing a six-year contract with a 60 million euro bio clause at a club which had produced the likes of Luis Figo, Cristiano Ronaldo, and Nani. Well, 
Marco Silva was at the club at the time, sanctioning a £3 million arrival, and it never worked out. His five year stay in Lisbon consisted of four separate loan spells, including a return to Scotland via Hibernian, and now at the age of 23, he's finally been sold after just two appearances for the first team. Brendan Rodgers, Christian Benteke. I still can't get my head around the fact that two different managers with working brains actually forked out 30 million quid on Christian Benteke. Brendan Rodgers was one of them at Liverpool in the summer 2015. Having watched his side concede six at Stoke City on the final day of the season, Season. Clearly he thought, oh I know what I'll do to fix that embarrassment of a defence. Uh, let's buy a, a six foot block of wood and chuck him up front. Honestly, Penteki had all the aerial threat of a goddamn litter box, ensuring his one disastrous season at Anfield, scored just 10 goals and generally looked unfit. Maybe he just replaced his daily protein shake with a pint of sugar. I don't know, but Christ above, what a horrendous signing. Jurgen Klopp, Chiro Amibile. Yeah, J Jurgen Klopp is a genius in the transfer market, more often than not. But he's also had his clangers, and ones that just don't really make sense. Signing Ji Dong Wan, a Sunderland flop made no sense. Ivan Perisic turned out to be a childish disaster. But no, I have to go for Chiro Mibile. Klopp's last big signing at Dortmund. Drafting men for £16 million in the summer 2014, he was supposed to be the replacement for Robert Lewandowski. You know, the lad who just scored over 100 goals in four seasons. Immobile, <laughs> three league three league goals. Three league goals in 24 outings. With Dortmund sitting bottom, yes, bottom of the league in February after 19 games. This is what happens when you replace a world-class goal scorer with a disinterested lamppost. Pep Guardiola, Dmitry Chigrinsky. In August 2009, Pep Guardiola signed Dmitry Chigrinsky, a Ukrainian center half who just left the UEFA Cup of Shakhtar Donetsk for 25 million euros. In 2009, that was a hell of a lot of money. This man was supposed to be the perfect foil for Jared Piquet in Barcelona's defense as they continued the European dominance. He most definitely wasn't. He played 12 games, looked about as comfortable as a pig chucked in a swimming pool, and returned to center for a knockdown down 15 million the next summer. So essentially, in the space of a year, Pepe just chucked 10 million of the club's resources out the goddamn window for no reason at all. Oligar Solskjaer, Magnus Wolf Ekein. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very telling that uh, the lad tasked with reviving Manchester United fortunes, I have to trawl through his signings at both Mould and that one relegated season at Cardiff. Seemingly, Solskjaer's only tactic at Cardiff when he first arrived, it just seemed to be Sign half of Norway, they'll know what to do! They most definitely didn't! And Magnus Wolf Ekheim was... Definitely the worst. An attacking midfielder, he made six Premier League appearances, looked of absolutely no threat to any Premier League defence, dead or alive, and was so bad that the poor lad was sacked before the year was out. A bit like Ollie himself. Steve Bruce, Scott Hogan. Steve Bruce has overseen about a hundred different transfers, including the signing of his son about six f***ing times. But no, Scott Hogan stands tall above the rest. And considering this is a man who signed Titus Bramble twice, that's uh... Oh. A £12 million signing from Aston Villa in January 2017, this Brentford hotshot, who'd already bagged 14 goals in 27 games for Brentford that season, found himself linked with West Ham, and yeah, only took him the 25 years to declare for his country. Don't give us this, Scott. You would have definitely declared for England if they wanted you. But no, he was absolutely brutal for Aston Villa. 10 goals in 61 games at Aston Villa. That was 12 million quid flushed right down the drain. Daniel Fark, Marcel Frank. Well, this one just didn't work out. Signed by Norwich in July 2017, Marcel Frank played in the first seven games of the season before being dropped after a hideous 4-0 defeat at Millwall. He never played for Norwich again. Chris Wilder, Nathan Thomas. Considering no manager has won more games in English football since September 2010 than Chris Wilder, it's fair to say he doesn't get too many things wrong. Nathan Thomas didn't quite work out though. A 22-year-old winger bought in from Hartlepool in May 2017. He played one league game before being booted out on two years worth of lower league loan deals. He'll be a free agent next summer. Ralph Hasenutl, Bruma. Well, again, this just didn't work out. A £12 million signing for RB Leipzig from Galatasaray in the summer 2017. He played 41 games, uh, scoring five goals uh, before being chucked out of PSV. Mauricio Pochettino, Vincent Janssen. If Mauricio Pochettino had got his way in 2015, the answer right here would 100% be signed a Berahino. So no, I'm gonna go for Vincent Janssen. £17 million is what was paid for that man. Signing strikers from the Dutch league is a bit like shoving your hand in a lawnmower. Yes, you may escape unharmed and with the smell of freshly cut grass coating your nostrils. On the other hand, you're gonna end up with a bloody stump. 31 games, two goals, he was more Afonso Alves than Luis Suarez, and at the age of 25, this former Dutch talent of the year is wasting his career at the back arse of Mexico. 
poor lad. Kike Sanchez Flores, Nikola Zigic. Don't get me wrong, Azure Del Horno ran him close, but I'm gonna go for Nikola Zigic. Who remembers him? Two meters worth of utter disappointment. Why Kike Sanchez Flores felt the need to bring him to Valencia for 20 million in August 2007? Just why? I mean, back then, that was insane money. Liverpool were paying that much for Fernando Torres. Zigic was, was appalling at Valencia. One goal in his debut season. Yeah, good job, it's, it's not like you're a centre forward or anything. He was then spat out on loan the following year, and he was given another chance at Valencia and, and scored four goals all season. But it was like putting Stephen Merchant in a pair of football boots. It just looked a bit awkward. Manuel Pellegrini, Wilfred Boney. It's not often you can pinpoint the exact moment when a footballer's career turns to absolute wet mush, but this was it. Wilfred Boney had been banging in for Swansea City. So much so they tricked the champions of England, Man City, into parting with 28 million pounds for his services. 28 million pounds for the walking dishwasher that is Wilfred Boney. Not only should that come with a sackable offence, some City fans were probably demanding a public stoning. He scored six goals across two seasons, and the tragic thing is that still more goals than he's managed in the four seasons since. For Christ's sake, he just spent the summer training at f***ing Newport. Nuno Espirito Santo, Lauren de Poch. For all the plotters, Nuno Espirito Santo deservedly gets for his shrewdness in the transfer market with Wolves. Let's not also forget the fact that he once paid money for Shawcrab Mustafi, so let's not get totally carried away. I'm gonna go for Lauren de Poch though. You know, that six foot bean polo. Couldn't score for love nor money for Huddersfield last season. In August 2016, Santo paid Gent £6 million to bring him to Porto. Seven league appearances, one goal. Anyway, that's the end of the lads. Let me know, what do you think your managers were signing wise? Uh, let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.